Oh, that's better. Well, good morning, church. What a beautiful day that the Lord has made. I thought that we all needed to see the church again this morning. I want you to know something. It is not the same without you sitting in these pews. The church is empty. That's because the church is not here. I'm just in this empty building this morning. And uh, just here to bring a devotion, just a reminder of that which we're looking forward to as we come together again, of that which we've had in the past. But it's also an opportunity for us to remember that this is a beautiful day that the Lord has given us. A day in which to proclaim His mercies. A day in which the sun rose. And even right now, it's shining as we, as we speak. But it is also still, as Dr. Karim so uh, pertinently reminded us just days ago, that this is still the Easter season. And we rejoice in the knowledge that Jesus lives and He is in the world today. Did you watch our president on, on Wednesday night? The news wasn't what many of us wanted to hear, that I'm pretty sure of. Lockdown is not a thing of the past. And it seems that this virus is set to continue to, to change the way in which we do things well into the future. One thing that's really caught my attention, though, was his statement that the men in our country are at war with the women. Domestic violence continues to increase in the situation in which we find ourselves. Last time I spoke about this, I was reminded on the Friday morning that this violence is not only men on women. And that's the truth. You see, abuse in all its varying forms is prevalent in many different ways in our homes and in the homes of our country. And this got me thinking about a time in Israel's history, a time when Israel was split into two, when it was the result of the sins of their fathers, as Jeroboam and Rehoboam, they, they bickered about supremacy. And we ended up with Judah and Israel. Judah with its capital, Jerusalem, and Israel with its capital, Samaria. Things were not going well with Israel at all. One king led to another, and little changed in the hearts of the people. And then in 2 Kings chapter 13, we read this. In the 23rd year of Joash, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, Jehoaz, son of Jehu, became king of Israel in Samaria. And he reigned 17 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord by following the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he caused Israel to commit. And he did not turn away from them. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel, and for a long time he kept them under the power of Hazel, king of Aram, and Ben-Hadad, his son. Then Jehoaz sought the Lord's favor, and the Lord listened to him, for he saw how severely the king of Arab was oppressing Israel. The Lord provided a deliverer for Israel, and they escaped the power of Arab. What an amazing, amazing piece of scripture. And what for me was absolutely evident in this piece of scripture is that no matter what we have done, no matter where we are, no matter what has happened in our lives, when we seek the Lord, we will find Him. And that's exactly what His Word promises. When we give our attention to Him, He listens and He answers our prayers. And this is good news for us this morning. As we lift up our prayers to the Lord, as we focus our lives upon Him and ask that He helps us in this time of fear and uncertainty that he would heal, that he would supply. So as we read in this beautiful scripture that we've read, here was a leader, a leader that did not do right in the eyes of the Lord. But in his time of distress, he turned and he searched for God. He looked for God. He prayed to God. And the Lord answered 
and brought relief for the people. Now to me, I don't know about you, but to me, it seems quite natural to presume that after seeing such an amazing rescue happen in their own lives, the people would all turn and follow God. But listen to verses 5 and 6. So the Israelites lived in their own homes as they had before, but they did not turn away from the sins of the house of Jeroboam which he had caused Israel to commit, they continued in them. And the Asherah pole remained standing in Samaria. The Israelites lived in their own homes. They did not turn away from their sin. I want to say to you this morning, we've been given a wonderful opportunity to set things right in our own homes. We've been confined to them and are struggling with the challenges that face the whole world with regards to income, sustenance, the future, our future security, what's going to happen to us. But we have choices to make, and those choices will determine our futures and the future of our families. The end result of Israel not turning back to God, actually the end result of their sin was their destruction as they were decimated by the Assyrians and carried off into slavery. None of this was unexpected, though. God had been warning them through the prophets for hundreds of years. What about you and I? What is happening in our homes right now? How are we treating one another? Peter said... Live as free people, but do not use your freedom to cover up for evil. Live as God's slaves. In other words, follow his will for your lives. Oswald Chambers said, The only thing that will enable me to enjoy adversity is the acute sense of eagerness of allowing the life of the Son of God to evidence itself in me. In other words, what he was saying quite simply, was that the only way for me to actually enjoy the difficult time that I'm going through, to endure in it, and to live through it, and to count it as joy, is to allow Jesus to have control of my life. He goes on to say, no matter how difficult something may be, I must say, Lord, I am delighted to obey you in this. Instantly, the Son of God will move to the forefront of my life and will manifest in my body that which glorifies him. We make the choice to follow him, no matter what. And Peter adds, show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God and honor the emperor. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for the time that we have, Lord, to come before you. We want to thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we've been granted. Lord, to make sure that our lives are right with you and our homes, Lord, are in that right place with you. That we serve you and you alone, Lord. That in the midst of this adversity, that in the midst of this uncertainty, that in the midst of the fear that's going on around us, Lord, we can stand strong because we trust in you. Our prayer, Lord, is for our president today, that you would touch him and strengthen him and encourage him. We pray for this land of ours, Lord, that is so broken. Lord, we ask your will upon us. We ask, Lord, that it would be your will for us as a land, as a country. Lord, we've prayed the Lord's Prayer so often. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, Lord on earth, right here in South Africa, as it is in heaven. And Father, forgive us, Lord, as we've forgiven those around us for the things that have happened in our lives. Forgive us, Lord. Lead us not into temptation. But Lord, deliver us from evil, from the midst of all that's going on around us, Lord, deliver us from evil. 
We pray for those around who are in desperate need of supply, Lord. Those who are in need of food and shelter, we lift them before you. You're the one who supplies. We pray for those who are ill today, Lord. Those whose bodies are broken and in need of your hand, Lord, your healing. You are the God who heals us. So we commit it all to you. And for each of us, Lord, even as we continue to serve you in our homes and within our families, we ask your hand upon us, Lord, that you would fill our homes with laughter, that you would fill our homes with joy, that you would grant that, Lord, peace that transcends all understanding, that it would guard our hearts and minds, even as we continue to serve you in the midst of this world in which we live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you to know that the church has been helping out. Uh, we've had ladies cooking in the church on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, we've got groceries going out. We've got food going out. Um, if you're able to help, please contact one of the pastors, either myself or Pastor Alban or one of the other pastors, and we will, we will help. We will gladly set you up and, and, and help you to get involved. Um, this is a time, an unusual time, in the world in which we live. But we need to still be the hands and feet of the one who saved us. Continue to give. We are so grateful for your giving that you're, we have been enabled and empowered to help many around you, many that you'll never know, many that you'll never see. But your giving is making it possible. Please continue. Now as we go from here, as we go into this beautiful day today, may you go with the great knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that His grace is sufficient to meet all your needs. Go with the great love of God. He sent His Son to die for you and for me, for the sin of the whole world. Even when we didn't know Him, He loved us go with the intimate fellowship, that personal connection to God's Holy Spirit. May He lead you and guide you. May you be obedient to His quiet, still voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.